You can count stitches, use antique machines, inspect fiber content, examine original garments, and strive endlessly for the holy grail of a historically accurate recreation garment. But does that actually exist? Can we ever recreate a gown or a bonnet or a pair of breeches that accurately and authentically replicate those worn 100, 200, 500 years ago? The short answer is no, and that's okay. Accepting that historical accuracy in its purest form is a myth opens up so many other fascinating questions that are far more worthwhile thinking about. So if this ultimate goal of historical accuracy is unobtainable, then what do dress historians learn from the process of recreation? And why is recreation so massively important to the study of dress history? If we can't have historical accuracy, then what can we have? In a way, I am glad that we can't perfectly recreate a garment from the past. If we could, then we would know all that there is to know about dress history. And well, I would be out of a job. But there are still so many things that we simply don't know. However many garments we forensically examine, however many experiments we do, our ideas are exactly that. They're ideas, they are theories, they are possibilities. There is no positive truth of dress history that we can hope to obtain. Instead, we can use dress history to explore the very depths of our humanity, to question why, to probe the past for answers about why humans do what humans do. But for a moment, let's imagine that we did invent a time machine. Envision a world in which we could travel back to 18th century Paris or Ming Dynasty China and carry out field trips and reconnaissance missions, talk to people making things and look at how they actually wear their dress. Fancy that we actually could find out the solutions to all of those unanswered, lingering questions. What then? Would that fantastical possibility mean that we could have historical accuracy? Nope. You'd also need to bring back all of the technologies to grow, harvest, spin, dye, weave your fibres into cloth. And you can never perfectly recreate the embodied experience of making and the myriad other social and cultural ideas and events and influences. You as a maker are a product of the here and now and you cannot ever separate yourself from that. There are also really important issues at stake here too. In sourcing and working with, for example, 19th century cotton, would you want to be willingly complicit in an industry built on enslavement? If historical accuracy is treated as an absolute, then it comes with all of these atrocious and racist structures of manufacture and trade attached. So taking all of these issues into consideration, if we treat historical accuracy as an absolute, it is impossible, and that's probably good. Something about your recreation will always be lacking, which is actually quite freeing when you think about it. You will never make something which is perfectly historically accurate. So take off that pressure, because it feels quite good. And that is just when we're thinking about the materiality of the garments that we recreate, what they're made from and how they're made. The historical accuracy behind actually wearing those garments brings with it an entirely different set of issues. We, with our 21st century bodies, diets, health, activities and experiences, cannot wear clothes or make clothes in the same way that people did hundreds of years ago. 
So, if it is impossible, why do we strive for it? And why is it so important? Why do I do it? What do we search for on screen and in reenactments or in the costuming that we see on Instagram? Why do we feel entitled to see and witness a historically accurate view of the past? Why do we assume that historical accuracy was the intention? Well, I think that it's because we want to believe in the historical world that we see before us. If you're interested in history, then you have probably built up an imaginary landscape in your head of how things looked and felt, how they smelt, how they tasted, whether on screen or through visiting or participating in a historical reenactment. The driving desire for some is to make this historical imaginary world a reality to see it play out before you, to have your dreams come true and to become immersed in them, to get that tiny bit closer to a past that is lost and quite possibly never existed. So the notion of historical accuracy is a comfort blanket, a mechanism to make us think that these faint ghosts of the past are real, that they're reliable, that they're within our grasp. Our interpretation of the past is constructed. Whether you're a fan of period drama or a professional historian, or both, then it's easy to search for things that reinforce and validate that imagined view of the past. And that's okay. Let's enjoy the freedom that owning each of our private visions of the historical past can give us and acknowledge them as uniquely our own. But the main problem with historical accuracy is how the term has been applied as an absolute, as a goal that you should be able to reach, that you should be striving for. So that means garments are either classified by the uh, historical fashion police as historically accurate or not. But accuracy, as we've said, is not an absolute. If anything, it's a scale with the furthest tip, an absolutely unreachable summit. But that doesn't mean that it isn't fascinating and illuminating and exciting to strive towards it, as long as you know that none of us will ever reach that summit. And this is where historical recreation becomes vital. We can't ever have a glorious, absolute, historical, accurate garment that conforms to an ultimate truth of the past. But we can experiment and we can learn and we can use making skills as an investigative method to answer questions about the sartorial past. You can choose, for example, to use a completely anachronistic power loom fabric but perfectly recreated construction methods for a Tudor kirtle. You can cherry pick which elements of a garment you choose to focus on in your experiments with historically documented sewing. Dependent on what questions you might be asking, what resources you have, and what your priorities are, and you'll find out different things each time. So I think we can approach historical sewing like a scientific experiment. Work out what questions you want to ask and what you want to achieve or learn, what your equipment is, and that can set the parameters of what does and doesn't matter to you, what you are trying to find out. Become comfortable with where your project sits on the scale of historical accuracy but rest easy that it will never answer all of the questions. It will never be an absolute, perfect, unsurpassable recreation. So if you make historical garments, or maybe you're just thinking of doing so, then work out what's important to you. Set your own accuracy expectations. What matters to you and what are you personally trying to achieve? Historical accuracy should never be an assumed goal for all, but it is important that we reclaim it for what it is. Historically informed sewing 
methods that have been documented and are traceable to extant garments or primary source texts allow us to gradually nudge our knowledge closer to understanding how garments were made. As long as you acknowledge that you will never find every piece of the jigsaw and that you might make a few mistakes in how you put the pieces together along the way, then maybe you'll begin to make out a faint spectre, a glimmer of the garments of the past.